Hi, Cameron here with another Pro 4 video. Uh, today I wanted to take another look at the i7 Surface Pro and kind of see some ways to alleviate power limit throttling. And one of the ways I've found to do that is through frame limiting. And just to do a quick recap, our green button is our temperature, our green line here is the package temperature, which really has never been an issue for the Skylake processors. It's more power limit than any thermal limit. Uh, the orange is our core frequency, and the blue is our processor graphics frequency, which isn't super reliable, and it seems to get stuck at zero a lot, which I don't know if is, it's really at that, but since we'll be playing games and seeing it at zero, I don't think that's really the case, but you kind of can get a good idea of what it's doing through there. But if you see a yellow line, that is power limit throttling. That is our enemy on the i7. It's If any time that's active, it's reducing performance artificially in order to keep the power usage down. So let's take a look. I'm running Minecraft here, and I'm going to run it full unlimited frames. And we're going to see what that looks like. We're running 1080p here, fancy settings, and we're going to go into the test world that I've been using uh, for some of the other videos, and we're going to take a look around here. I do have Optifine installed at this point, so you can see the frame rate's actually at a high level. The package right now is using 24 watts, and already we're into power limit throttling. So we're running around still at 3 gigahertz which is great but that's because the package TDP is in its boost mode where it goes up to 25 watts so you can see our frame rate rate is really high it's at about 160 frames a second and you can see the power limit throttling is going to kick in hard because of what we're doing here you can basically see it's going to hit 100 percent and the core frequency is going to start dropping. There we go. Fans kicking in. The processor graphics still hit 950 a lot of times. So it's going full speed. So it's still going great at the high rate. There are 24 watts is being used. Which the boost mode's at 25 watts for. Uh, it's, it's kind of an averaging system for how long it stays in that boost mode. But once you've been using 25 watts for more than a minute or so, it will bump down to 15 watts. And we'll notice pretty quickly once it, once it drops to 15 watts there on the package TDP. So let's just uh, wait for that to happen. And then we'll talk about frame loading and how that can really help us out. Okay, there we go. We're down to 12, 13 watts. So we're being limited to, to a 15 watt envelope at this point. The core frequency is at 1.2. The graphics frequency is at 700. So we're in a state of being power throttled right now. And since I have Optifine installed, it's actually running still very smoothly. Um, most of the time in, in my Core i7 testing that I did in the other videos, I was really trying to stress the graphics package. That's why we were getting such low frame rates in a lot of games. Um, but really, you can tune these games, and they can run really well on this device. I'm going to make a video about that soon. But you can see we're just yellow lining it with power limit throttling basically the entire time. But here's the thing. You're running Minecraft at 130 frames a second. The display only refreshes at 60 frames a second. So there's really no point to these extra frames. So you can actually turn on a feature in most games uh, called frame limiting. And let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go to our video settings, and we're going to drop the frame rate. We're going to drop it down to limiting at 60 frames a second. Boom, there we go. So you can see a few things have happened. The power limit throttling is no longer throttling, which is great, because your core frequency is still high. So what that means is you get a more responsive computer. You're not using more power than you need to, so when you do need it, it, your frames don't drop out. You don't get any of the lower frames. You just get a really smooth 60 frame a second experience. 
and it really alleviates uh, the load on the processor so it's able to make use of the thermals way more effectively. So that may be something that you're interested in doing. You, you have the option of doing it two ways. You can just limit the frame rate, which is good for responsiveness in the mouse. But if you're you know, someone who really doesn't like tearing and values smoothness over everything else, you could actually turn on V-Sync in a lot of games, which will still limit it to 60 frames a second, but it will also match the refresh rate of your monitor. So you can do it that way as well, and that eliminates tearing at the expense of a little bit of a delay in the, in the mouse. Really not anything that a casual gamer would notice anyways, though. But you can see, you know, capping the frame rate here at 60 frames a second, which is as fast as the panel is refreshing anyways, you can really keep responsiveness high by keeping a high core frequency, um, and you're not missing out on anything. So we just went from a fully throttling system, clocks going down to 1 gigahertz, to being able to maintain a high frequency, high responsiveness, and uh, really, we, we're, we're not missing out on anything, and it's running perfect, and we're not power limit throttling. So if you can take advantage of, of uh, frame limiting in your game, I would highly recommend doing so. If your game's... Your game might even have problems at uh, 50 frames, or sorry, 60 frames a second. But if you, you might want to limit it at, you know, 40 frames a second in a game that's a little more uh, difficult, and you will get even more benefits. You know, the lower you can keep that package TDP down at your desired frame rate, the more it's able to continue to boost when it really does need it in the game. You know, an explosion happens then the core frequency is high and it can maintain it rather than really stuttering because it's already at its absolute thermal limit. So I hope that helps you uh, to realize the benefits that you can get from uh, frame limiting and I highly recommend it as not only is that going to help you you know be able to get into burst modes when you really do need them in the game but uh, it also just used less power in general. I mean, you don't need to use the power if, if it's refreshing more than your eye can even see or the panel can even display. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe. We'll do more videos on Surface devices and all kinds of other tech. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.